Welcome to today's tutorial coming to you from Towson University's Department of Electronic Media and Film. Today we're going to be learning how to assemble the Panasonic HVX200 camera and the SG Pro 35mm image converter with flip module. All right, you see here all of the necessary components uh, for the assembly. We have our Panasonic HVX200, our SG Pro 35mm image converter with flip module. We have our support base with our rod support our rods or speed rails, shims, mounting bolts, QR mount, power supply for the SG Pro, 35 millimeter lens, lens gear, follow focus unit, and mat box. First we secure our tripod plate to the bottom of our base support structure with the front end or open end of the tripod plate facing toward the front or the rod clamps. Then we attach the entire assembly onto the tripod. Next we're going to add our rods or speed rails to the assembly. And we do that by inserting them into the rod clamps on the front of the base support. Now the length of your speed rails will depend on what you have to support in front of the camera, follow focus, mat box, etc. But to start off with, Move them back to where the rear of the rails or rods are flush with the rear of the support base and then tighten the screw here with the Allen wrench provided snugly but not too tight. So after this basic initial part of the assembly process we begin what is probably the most precise and difficult part of the assembly and that is the joining together of the camera body and the image converter. We begin this part of the assembly by placing the image converter on the support rods and sliding it into an approximate position. So now that we have our 35 millimeter image converter on the rails, we can approximate how high our camera needs to be in order to properly dock with the converter. And to do that, we place some blocks and shims on the base and we also attach what's called our QR mount to the tripod plate on the bottom of the camera. And then we rest the camera on top of those shims and we can see approximately how high our camera will be relative to our image converter. We need our image converter, a variety of different shims, two mounting bolts, our Allen wrench, of course our base support with rods, our QR mount, and our camera with the QR plate attached to the bottom and before we can actually join the camera and the image converter together, we have to take a few additional steps. One is to apply an 82 to 72 millimeter step down ring to the camera lens. Next we need to remove the lens adapter coupler. It is set in place by three screws and we loosen three of those screws and we can just remove that as such. We take the lens adapter coupler and attach it to the step down ring on the front of our HVX lens. Through the bottom of the base plate, you will insert the two mounting screws. Then holding the screws in place, you're going to turn them over and through the holes provided, start placing your blocks and shims onto those mounting bolts. Finally, you're going to take your QR mount that has threaded holes in the bottom and begin to attach those mounting bolts to the QR plate. Once you get the mounting bolts threaded into the underside of the QR mount, you'll use the provided Allen wrench to just snugly tighten those. Do not over tighten them because you'll be most likely going back and making adjustments to these whether it be right or left or possibly adding or removing shims from the assembly. All right now we're ready to join camera and converter together and to do this we move the converter along the rails until the housing slides into the coupler. At this point we should have a very, very narrow gap between the coupler and the housing of the adapter, and it should be consistent all the way around. 
If for some reason it's hitting on the top or the bottom, the left or the right, it means that you have an issue with the height of the camera relative to the adapter. You may need to add more shims or take away some shims. Also, you may want to examine how this camera is positioned this way, left to right, in relation to the adapter. The camera can shift somewhat left to right. You need to make sure that that adjustment is also sound. The third adjustment is actually the angle of approach. This camera can pivot somewhat on the tripod plate, and what it can do is it can go in at an off angle, and what that does is create an inconsistent gap. If the gap is wider in some areas and narrow in others, it probably means that the angle of approach from left to right or from top to bottom is somehow inconsistent or off. After we do that, we simply finger tighten the uh, set screws, three of them, and we also, with the Allen wrench, lock the adapter down on the speed rails. Now we attach our 35 millimeter lens to the adapter. To do this, we need to release the front cap on the adapter, and to do that, we hold down the release button and rotate clockwise. When inserting the lens into the lens mount, you want to make sure that this white line on the lens corresponds to the red dot on the lens mount, which is at approximately 2 o'clock. This should allow you to insert the lens into the lens mount with minimal resistance or impedance and rotate counterclockwise until you hear the click. We need to apply the lens gear to the focus ring of the lens and to do so we simply stretch apart the lens gear until it can fit over the focus ring and then allow these screws to rest on the focus ring and turn freely. Okay, now we're ready to attach our follow focus. The follow focus, of course, is the device that meshes with the lens gear and actually allows the first camera assistant to pull focus during a shot without actually touching the lens. So a very useful tool. We can place this with the dial on camera right or camera left, whichever the camera operator and the first camera assistant decide on. And once that follow focus is in position to where I see that the gears on the follow focus and the gears on the lens gear are going to mesh, I lock that follow focus into position and tighten it. And now you see that when I turn the dial of my follow focus, I'm also rotating a focus ring on the lens. The last element that I'm going to place on my rails is the mat box. I slide the mat box onto the rails and over the rails and again I tighten with the tightening screw provided on the bottom. Now you see we have our rig fully assembled and ready to shoot. The Panasonic HVX200, our SG Pro with the flip module, 35mm lens, follow focus, and mat box. So thanks for joining us today. I hope you got something out of it. Be sure to check out my YouTube channel, Plow 2 for other tutorials and videos. And special thanks to Chris Nelson, who produced this segment. Thanks.